So I call this, I mean, I don't really have a title for it in the book, but I'm gonna call it for today, just for here, Brushes with a Librarian's Navigational Genius. <laughs> Crisp and stylish in a pleated pantsuit, knotted scarf between wings of a collar, Rochelle Murray immediately stood out to a Lilliputian as a high flyer successfully executing her airy dream of a librarian cooter. I was five. <laughs> that children's section was a modernist cave at the far end of the first floor where the bright red carpet ended. A room bearing permanent displays of Newberry Medal and Caldecott Medal award winning picture books. The, gen the genre flourished in that progressive era. Elevators framed the entrance, and there Rochelle resided, guardian and greeter, rubber stamped like an aircraft stick within reach. Her lapel pin resembled a button with a mechanical purpose on the flying machine named literature. After, let's see. Curls of Rochelle's hair hovered above her eyes like a cloud. She aimed a considerable smile at each small face that burst out of the maze of the adult stack, scampering past brooding hulks of microfiche machines and stopping short in front of the cockpit of the desk. Around its short legs, flooring gleamed like ice, but Rochelle's voice was not slippery. Nouns consorted with verbs in a direct dance that encouraged the action of not running, but walking with awe, the most religious form of respect. Welcome to the library. Let me know if you need help. I'd never heard a voice that filled each word so fully with tone, no syllables shorted. It was a sound that tossed high the fetching sparks of a pitch, like a July 4th firework. A voice to hear and see. Had she written all the books she checked out? It seemed possible at first. She was as colorful, possessed a glossy gaze like a binding. A few years later, when I arrived for an afternoon stay that might stretch to closing time, she never got around to reminding me I was from the family that owed the library Lord knows how many fines. <laughs> of course she knew, on top of the delinquent list like all else, and this is key to her, but her merciful mission encouraged the comforting reverie that maybe I was, after all, of saner lineage, and just not remembering the fact, suffering from amnesia like a character on the popular TV show, Medical Center. <laughs> Due to Rochelle's implacable mood tinged with mysterious but reliable friendliness, I encouraged my parent to abandon me at the library as often as possible. She happily obliged at first. After Rochelle's kind greeting, I crept into the quiet vault of low stools and varnished pine tables with a pale grain that jabbed like a book Wood was writing. Reachable shelves cradled, cradled copies of classics like Make Way for Ducklings and Hats for Sale as well as newer masterpieces like Ezra Jack Keats's The Snowy Day and Syndac's Nutshell Library in its minuscule slipcover. Renowned young adult novels crowned taller shelves, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, The Phantom Toll Booth, The Pushcart War, Sounder, Old Yeller, Ribsy. In Rochelle's domain, journeys were always beginning. I knew by then that she had not written all these books, but that did not scar her reputation. She represented them all, every single book. And that made her president of literature, a more regal position than writer. Pillows existed to sit on. Rugs were not, not ruined by cats or bug infested. The kids scale restroom was immaculate. Posters promoted space travel, land of rainbows, and Scary's busy, busy world book with pages so full of images the eyes never saw them all. The cumulative sheen hinted at a universe that imagination had cured of ignorance and cruelty. A world that did not include the PCB laden Mississippi mud, sawing away at levee walls a few blocks away and licking coal ebb and barges, trolling the main channel. Rochelle didn't care for loud noises, but if hollering was connected to the finding of the right book, it was tolerated, even explored. She cared with curiosity wanting to be introduced to any shape enthusiasm toward literature assumed. What do you have there, she wanted to know. Then, what do you like most about that book? Then, have you read any books by that author before? If so, she wanted to know which books, and when they were read, 
and her irresistible, agile tone kept evoking answers. Uh, I, uh, I heard she was not false in forcing it. I heard she was deserving of a reply no matter how hard it might be for a shy kid to produce. I heard she was of one coherent piece, but that her seriousness was not too simple either. Not dumbed down, but complex in the manner of a prism. Her spoken sentences slanted evenly, just like her cursive on the pink library cards. Rochelle didn't creep too close as I stuttered. She kept a respectful distance, stood straight. As a result, this nervous wreck of a fourth grader enjoyed increasing ease of exchange. I looked up at her with amazement. It was a time of wicked playground teasing. I was gaining weight fast and in mirrors beheld as a speckled grub worm afraid of the sun. Next year, things got worse, but I kept reading. <coughs> Hearing how inspired I was by the biography of polymath Benjamin Banneker, Banneker designer of Washington DC's street layout and the creator of a clock made of hand carved spinning wooden parts, she urged me to study the lives of George Washington Carver, Ida B. Wells, and Gandhi. When she noticed I kept checking out scary books in order to study the art of the illustrations, she pointed me to the picture book, Who Needs Donuts? by Mark Allen Stamity, with pages even more dense and unusual with visuals. Why didn't Rochelle despise me too? Why did she care and how? She did not automatically and dully nod her head like so many ineffectual adults. She refused to clutter our dialogue with useless gestures. Her thoughtful poise convinced me she really recognized the urgency of my mission to locate enough lucid stories and vibrant illustrations to see me through the grim confusion and powerlessness inflicted when a home is falling to ruin and no one can fix it. Then again, maybe her empathy was not such a riddle. After all, we'd had quite a long history by then. She'd seen what books looked like after a month at my house. She'd seen the damage the place inflicted. For no matter what was done to those books in the early days, Rochelle Poker Face also checked out other volumes to us when the latest poor stiffs were returned. Her conviction that literature was for all people circumvented commerce. She'd not deny a clan of six hungry, curious kids the sustenance that they well might need the most. And when my harried parent at last apprehended that rather than being treated like a miscreant debtor and daycare burden, I was receiving sympathy and support from her, a brand new plan to shoot down the high flyer was concocted and pursued. This ploy involved writing notes for me to deliver to Rochelle. Each one requested a book that had been banned in some American town or city. She wanted In the Night Kitchen by Sindak, new depictions of a baby. And she wanted the Nationally Crumb Tinies by Ed Edward Gorey, Ghastly Ways to Die Young. And she wanted me to order Our Body Ourselves, Sex Education uh, for Young Girls. And then a book praising the art of graffiti with a Norman Mailer intro. <laughs> Terrified of disobeying any parental command, I delivered the requests. The scrawling cinder was sure would force the civilized librarian to admit, no, can't do that revealing that Rochelle was no absolute champion of the arts, but just like the rest, a hypocrite for the convenient literature against the inconvenient <clears throat> kind. What happened? Rochelle kept things right between us by refusing to be baited. She read the note without flinching. She set the note aside, sailed right over the snare like all the other traps. She bought the provocative book if she did not already have it in the library, which she most often did. 48 years later, she remained my librarian, writing in June of 2021. Hi, Ben. Have you done anything more with the people I suggested you contact about the information you wanted about a special meeting held in Davenport many years ago? <laughs> are you staying at home this summer? Are you writing? Or are you doing something else? I should do something else. Have you, have, how is your delightful wife? Give her my best. Every time I see sushi, I think of you. <laughs> Blade. <laughs> the Davenport, and this last line is, is these last line is just the Davenport Library here is quite busy. I'm enclosing information I had promised to send earlier. I am sorry for the delay. My best Rochelle. Imagine that. She apologizing to me for tardiness. It was the most stupendous loop-de-loop -loop of them all. So that's just a little excerpt 